Boris Johnson, a greater under pressure. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I have done a number of videos on former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson. He is a narcissist and a greater narcissist. He knows what he is. He knows that he needs to control people. He needs. He knows that he needs the validation of individuals. He may not call it fuel. He'll have some other term for it. He recognises that he takes from other individuals and bolts onto his construct. And he also knows that he uses people. He recognises that in essence he doesn't stand for anything, but he stands for everything. I've undertaken various analyses of Johnson because it enables you to understand the behaviour of a greater who adopts the facade chameleon-like that he is of this bumbling Boris whilst he's laughing down his sleeve. Johnson had to appear before the Covid inquiry that is taking place within the United Kingdom. After all, he was the Prime Minister at the time of the pandemic. And this is an interesting instance of where he shows how he deals with the fact that he's under pressure. First of all, he's compelled to appear before the inquiry, which, of course, is a threat to his control. But naturally, his narcissism deems that he can take it in his stride, that he'll have an answer for everything. And, of course, in the duration of the inquiry, he is subjected to various questions, which are seeking to elicit responses from him, explanations from him, and also threaten him with accountability, which, as you know, is a threat to control. So it's a useful opportunity to understand how a greater narcissist would behave in such circumstances when faced with these repeated threats to control. Greater narcissists invariably would avoid being subjected to the situation in the first place. That was not an option that was available to Mr Johnson. Furthermore, where they're compelled to deal with such a situation, it might be dealt with through a refusal to actually answer anything utilising a wall of lawyers. Or, where that's not appropriate, that charisma would be utilised and the demonstration of a huge intellect. With Johnson, his core has been brutally exposed at the COVID inquiry over the last few days. It shows that he's a mean-faced, calculating individual, that he relies upon being blusteringly inarticulate as part of the facade that he operates, and, repeatedly, he actually struggled to suppress his irritation and fury at being channel challenged during the inquiry. He, like any other narcissist, has fury beneath the surface, but he has a particularly adept control over it. That's why you don't see him erupting at people, fighting with people, that instead he'll often smirk and laugh to himself, uh, reveling in the knowledge that he is the player of games, that he is the master, that he's getting away with it once again. Remember, this is the only Prime Minister that has actually undertaken a criminal conviction in the course of his premiership in relation to Partygate. The inquiry was concerned to uncover how the British government managed the pandemic and look at what mistakes were made. Johnson's concern, of course, is underpinned by the prime aims and to address the acquired reputation that has come his way as a consequence of being an individual prone to carelessness, indifferent, laziness and arrogance. And he sought to do so by pulling the wool over his interrogator's eyes so that their repeated threats to his control were nullified. His technique during this was to accept general responsibility for everything that the government got wrong, whilst at the same time denying specific responsibility for any bad decision whatsoever. It was clear during the questioning of him that the blindness to the COVID threat, the lateness of the lockdowns, Partygate, the incidents around Barnard Castle, 
It was never his fault, which is commensurate, of course, with the behavior of a narcissist. A greater narcissist is no different from a mid-range or lesser narcissist in such circumstances, who would always seek to blame somebody else. He repeatedly put forward the message that the government did exceptionally well, and where it didn't, it was because the government couldn't have known what to have done. Therefore, it wasn't at fault, meaning he wasn't at fault. If other people knew about it, they didn't tell him. He, didn't, he wasn't briefed by them. He didn't know. The advice wasn't provided in a clear m manner. He would occasionally spray insincere memorised praise on others, talking about excellent civil servants, excellent performance by all the United Kingdom nations. But he never blamed himself. He would blame everybody else when confronted with the detail of the mistakes. Johnson's tactic was to always go to big picture, to talk about the generality, but as soon as he got drawn into the specifics, then he needed to issue the denials and the blame shifting. On occasions, as the pressure mounted, you would note that his face would puff up, that his mouth would start to form words, but he wouldn't actually say anything, and he would start to flail his hands. It shows there where the facade isn't cracking, but it's coming under pressure. Johnson is incapable of honesty. He's incapable of taking genuine responsibility. He gets himself into positions whereby ordinarily he doesn't have to be questioned. He's not accustomed to individuals having the right to question him. Ordinarily, he evades it. And therefore, he explains he didn't see things or say things or decide something. But then, he would find himself being pulled up about that particular point. It was the case that he had early briefings on the severity of the pandemic, contrary to what he claimed. But he didn't actually act upon them. He also did know that his staff weren't sticking to his rules, because he wrote a message about it. He did change his mind about whether to shut down or open up. And he then changed his mind about whether to let what he described as the bed blockers die or whether to prioritise saving lives. The pressure showed because some of his defences started becoming consistent. He would defend not calling a national autumn lockdown on the basis that it would be unfair to the areas where COVID was low to be pulled into a general shutdown. And then at another, he then attacked the devolved nations for following more cautious policies on the basis that the virus knows no bounders. Borders, rather. The only instances where you saw a supposedly emotional response from him wasn't in relation to the people that died, wasn't in relation to the people that were bereaved, wasn't in relation to those that had been devastated by his policies. He doesn't care about those individuals, despite creating the appearance that he does. Boris Johnson only, can, only cares about Boris Johnson. And where there was a more emotive response, it came to where he needed to save his own skin. The first instance occurred when Hugo Keith Casey revealed that during the pandemic, Boris Johnson had attacked the Daily Mail for criticising him. Fuck the Daily Mail, ignited fury, he had said. That was raised, and of course, raising it in the context of the inquiry created a threat to Johnson about alienating his current employer. Therefore, in order to nullify that threat to control, he then lavished praise on the paper as that great organ. His narcissism motivated him to save his own skin. The second instance where he showed a more emotional response was when he recalled his own time, where he had COVID in intensive care, a memory that brought him close to, but not quite, to tears. He was only moved because he was talking about himself. Once again, the only thing that matters to him is Boris Johnson. Thus, during this inquiry, we saw repeatedly where he came under pressure where his need for control was repeatedly threatened by exposing his own inconsistencies. And yet, in any instance, 
When it came to talking about the others, he demonstrated his arrogance, his lack of concern for them, and continued on doing what he does best, looking out for Boris Johnson. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.